Hey everybody, KMO here. I am in my truck outside of a movie theater in Claremont, New Hampshire. It was probably not the wisest thing for me to do to drive my truck to Claremont, New Hampshire, but I'm here and hopefully I'll make it home. If you're watching this, I made it home because I can't upload this from here. Wow, so Joker. You know, it's only it's been out less than a week and I tried to avoid spoilers. Some folks are not very considerate about the spoiler warnings. Not mentioning any names, Paul Joseph Watson. But it was a very compelling film. I was engrossed. How I'm going to feel about it a week from now, I can't say. But ten minutes outside of it, I am... It's shaken. Uh, you know, a lot of... What I experienced, you've probably heard from other people, in the very beginning of the film, he's set up as a very sympathetic character, and you know where he's going, and you realize that this sympathy you feel for him is misplaced, given where you know he's going. Except you don't know where he's going, because this is clearly not the Heath Ledger Joker, certainly not the Jared Leto Joker, not the Jack Nicholson Joker, not really any Joker from any of the comic books that I've read. I'll have to say, I'm not a big Batman comic book aficionado. I have read the famous stuff. You know, the famous stories by Frank Miller and, uh, I guess, Grant Morrison. Um, <sighs> Mr. Magic. Watchmen, Promethea, um, Alan Moore. I think he did a famous Batman story I've probably read. But I, I'm not a big fan of DC superhero comics in general. Even when I was into superhero comics, I was on the Marvel side. So I don't really have much attachment to the character. But the world, I mean, it's set in the early 1980s in a fictional place. You know, there's a garbage strike, which there was a garbage strike in New York City, and garbage did pile up. So there's elements of the real world, and there's elements of different portrayals of the Joker from comics and from other movies, all thrown into a blender, but not really blended that much. More sort of pasted together, more like the, the joke journal, you know, that Arthur Fleck carries around with different things cut out, pasted down, scribbled over. But, you know, stuff lifted from other places in big recognizable chunks and kind of slapped down. Like, you've surely heard, and if you've seen the movie, you know, there's like big pieces of Taxi Driver just lifted up and placed down onto the canvas of this film. You know, and, and not, not much effort made to like smooth out the edges and make it, you know, blend into everything, although it clearly fits. But, you know, discordant, jagged, collage-style stuff creates this coherent, you know, presentation. And this film certainly did that. I mean, this is... And Joaquin Phoenix, I mean, you know, people get big screen, you know, credits in this. Actors get big credits in this that have only a few lines. Like Mark Maron, did he have, what, two lines? You know, and he's, he's one of the lead actors credited in the film. It's all Joaquin Phoenix and uh, the actress who plays his mother. What's his name? Her name. <laughs> uh, and, you know, the, the actor who plays uh, Thomas Wayne and I guess, you know, his social worker. These are the big roles and they're just like bit parts. It's mostly Joaquin Phoenix just sort of <laughs> bouncing around this uh, brutal world and being brutalized and humiliated. You know, I can see why people who are doing well, people who think that by, you know, championing PC culture or woke culture, they are somehow insulated and not responsible for the horror of the world. And, you know, the world is a great place. I'm happy to be here. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't not want to be here. Uh, but it's it's messed up. And just, you know, asserting your woke credentials doesn't absolve you of shit. And that's, I think, one of the major messages of this movie. But this doesn't seem to be a message-driven movie. This is a performance-driven movie. This is a movie that sets a mood. This is a movie that just kind of messes with you. I don't think there's really much of a message here. Other than, don't get too comfortable. <laughs> but, you know, clearly there's a lot of the anxiety, the cultural anxiety of this moment in the film. But it's a period piece. You know, it's from the 80s. 
and stuff doesn't really hook up, you know, like, how could the Joker be that much older than Bruce Wayne? I don't know. It doesn't really seem to work. But it's okay. I mean, this is not... It, it doesn't feel... I never got the sense for a second that this was supposed to slot into some pre-established chronology of Batman and the Joker. This is... Like I say, it's just a whole bunch of different material put into the blender and just given a little pulse. Not thoroughly blended. Just a little pulse. Pour it out. Spread it out. Paste it down. And then have Joaquin Phoenix just roll around on it. <laughs> I really liked it. Again, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it in a week. But right now, I'm pleased with it. Tomorrow, I'm going to go into the TV station and I'm going to talk to Colin about it. He saw it last Saturday. Loved it. Wants to see it again. Is anxious to talk about it. And has been very considerate about not throwing out spoilers. So, uh, more on the Joker tomorrow. I hope that's good news for you. Talk to you then.